Um, okay, so let's then dive in a bit to get our hands dirty um, playing with these things. So it, uh, you know, this this school, uh, as I was kind of mentioned, is is uh, easiest done when uh, you know we can show some exercises and then come and look at your laptop screens and troubleshoot and answer your questions. So um, let's let's do the best we can, but please. Um, uh, you know, let's let's try to make this uh, interactive in a sense that um, please make sure to communicate if you're, you know, we'll ask at certain times if you're done with a certain step or if you need more time. Um, so please please make sure to, to be responsive in that way, um, as well as to ask questions. We have um, some support that we, we hope that these exercises will work for, for everybody um, and they, they will uh, be an important prerequisite for the, the steps that come next. Um, so we have uh, still a couple of hours today, about two hours today that we can spend on this. Um, so let's let's try to get um, everything that we can out of it. So I, I have for today three different parts of this interactive exercise. Um, first will be really kind of some basics of running Jetscape. Um, then second will I'll show an example how you can um, construct kind of a complete observable from, from Jetscape, from the ground. This is somewhat catered towards experimentalists who want to um, just produce a, uh, a prediction or set of predictions from Jetscape for, say, a particular observable that they're measuring. Um, and then the third part will give a very simple example of how to implement a custom module. So everything today, again, it's really going to be focused on kind of the running of this code um, without much discussion of the physics. So, um, but these, these concepts, many of these, these details that are here will show up again in the physics ses uh, session. And so the hope for today is that we really can understand, get a little bit of feel and intuition for, um, for how to actually run the framework so that in the upcoming days we can um, we can focus really on understanding the physics um, as much as possible. Okay, so again, um, uh, I, let me just remind you to, to ask your questions and, and give feedback in this uh, Slack software channel. Um, and so I, I see there is uh, um, maybe 60 people in this channel. So it's, it's an open channel, so you can join it. Um, at, at any point you want. Um, and so it's just take a look there also before you ask a question to see if somebody else has asked that same question. Um, and uh, let me remind you also, as Christine said, that if you see a question somebody has asked that you're running into the same problem, for example, um, give that question a, a thumbs up so that we know also to put some extra um, importance uh, to, to answering that. Um, to so your feedback, again, is important so we know where to focus here since we can't uh, see you all in person. Um, so I see, I do see more people streaming into this uh, software channel. So that's, that's good. Okay, so let's, let's take a stab at, at the first part of these exercises. So kind of the basics of running Jetscape. Okay, so um, all of you, uh, I, I hope, have completed the prep instructions um, that we sent out during last week. Um, and I, I want to also thank everybody, uh, those of you uh, who have helped others also with these prep instructions. Um, we have a big audience and so you know, a lot of kind of corner case problems can come up. So I, I think all of those got solved. Um, Again, if you're still running into any technical issues, we do have um, Chuck uh, ready to help with those in a, in a separate breakout room. Uh, so please let us know um, in the Zoom chat if you want to join that breakout room. Um, but okay, so I, I think uh, it's probably a fair guess that many of you are not super familiar with Docker. Um, some, some of you may be because some of the experiments, for example, use this and it's, it's getting to be a more and more common um, soft piece of software to, to run code, kind of containerized code, as people say. And so I, I want to start that you get some feel or, or intuitive, you know, some comfort for running 
with Docker. So I, I would just give you my, my personal tip in doing this is, is I always keep two terminals open when I'm running things in Docker. So I keep one terminal where I'm, I've entered the Docker container and one where I'm outside the Docker container, just a normal terminal on my laptop. And so normally kind of the important thing is then just whichever operation you want to do, uh, you know, whenever you're going to run a command, you just think to yourself, okay, do I want to run this inside the Docker container or do I want to run it outside? And so whenever you want to run anything with Jetscape, you're building Jetscape, you're running Jetscape, and that should always be done from inside the Docker container. Um, on the other hand, for other operations, like if you were just editing some text files, so editing, for example, your configuration file, um, you can do this from outside the container. And so often this is, this is a bit easier um, since you can open you know, your favorite text editor that you're, you're used to, for example. So this, this looks like something like the following, uh, that you, know, you have one, uh, one terminal that is, that is inside the container here. And so let, let, re, let me remind you, um, so it's, it's gonna be very important that, that this Docker uh, is working for you. So if you if you've successfully completed the prep instructions, you should have um, executed this command that said Docker run, and then a big long line of things that you copy and pasted. And so that, that should have uh, downloaded um, uh, the Docker container that we use for Jetscape on your machine already. So now what you can do to um, to enter that Docker container is you can you can in your terminal enter this command docker container ls dash a dash a will list all the possible docker containers both those that are currently running and those that are also stopped containers um, and so if you do this you should um, i hope see a container that pops up here and it should have a name called my jetscape or if you modified this this docker run command that we gave it's named whatever you specified and it uh, it may say here that this is exited uh, you know it's a stop it means it's a stopped container that you're not currently running um, or you may if you've kept your terminal open it may be running already and then uh, once you see that name my jetscape here you can just run this command docker start dash ai and then the name, my Jetscape of that container. And when you run that, that should then change your, um, your prompt. And you see something that should say Jetscape user or um, whatever. Uh, you may see a different prompt uh, as also, um, depending whether you're running on Linux or Mac, but you should somehow see that prompt um, change when you enter the container. And then uh, when you, um, when you enter that container, you can see that your home directory is this slash home slash Jetscape user. And if you just ls um, whatever is in that directory, um, you should see the, the pieces of code that we asked you, asked you to download during the prep uh, instruction. So you should see Jetscape. You should, these are directories here. You should see Jetscape dash analysis, and you should see this summer school um, 2020. Um, okay, so I, I think this this maybe would also be a good time to kind of check our capability to get feedback and make sure everybody is uh, not lost yet. Um, so I I would suggest um, if this works for you, um, can if you can enter a yes on the Zoom, and if this doesn't work for you, if you're somehow not at this state where you have your Docker container open and you can see these directories here, uh, then enter a no in the, uh, in the Zoom uh, icon. So I'll give you maybe a minute and maybe the chairs can um, report to me how, how that's looking in a, in a few seconds. I see one no so far. Okay, great. And most uh, most people are responding yes. With, with yes. Perfect, perfect. 
Um, okay, so that that's good. So for, for anybody who is um, confused or, or falling behind, please, uh, I encourage you again, write a, write a question in this software Slack channel. Um, and we try to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, or you can also ask if it's just a technical problem um, uh, that you can um, enter this, this technical support room. So I did see um, there is a, a question, I think, asking, is there a way to assign a name to the user inside Docker? Currently, my Docker username says, I have no name. Um, that's a very good question, um, because this, uh, this message seems a little maybe scary or that something is going wrong. It's actually perfectly fine. Um, this, uh, so one doesn't have to worry about this. There are, I think, some you know, technical ways one can work around to make this prompt look like something else, but, um, but that's really okay and not a source to worry. Um, the reason this is just related to some details in how Docker um, handles um, basically user ID and group ID on different operating systems. So there's some slight differences there between Mac and uh, Linux, for example. Okay, so if your prompt instead of saying Jetscape user or something, something says, uh, I have no name, that's also perfect. Uh, as long as you can see those three directories here. Okay. Um, so with that, I think we can um, move ahead. Uh, uh, sorry, can I, we have 28 yeses and I can't tell if the other participants are having, are just not done yet or not clicking yes. There is confusion so, about where to enter yes. Uh, lots of people entered yeses in the chat window. Ah, okay. So everyone, if you could please go to, click on the participant list at the bottom and you will see the list of participants, but at the bottom of that panel, you will see buttons to press yes and no. And now I'm starting to see the number of yeses and go up dramatically and there is one no. And there were also a couple of questions on the Slack channel. So perhaps while we get people to at least register a yes, are any of those worth going through, Volker? What was that? So I, I copy over the, the questions what did I see in the chat into the Slack channel and then I assume that James looks in the Slack channel. So there was so one I, question. Um, yeah, there's a relatively small number of questions now. So yeah. I, I just try to directly read these. Um, but yeah, please, please also interrupt me if I, I may start missing them as, a, yeah. as things get more chaotic. Um, so I see that there is, uh, there is a question um, that the, there is some error with the Docker run command that somebody is having. Um, so th this, I think we have to refer to one of the TAs or, or to Chuck for the technical support. Um, and then uh, there is a second question that says, um, when one does this ls command here, it only shows Jetscape, but not the other directories. Um, so this, this means um, that you haven't uh, precisely followed the prep instructions, I think. Um, so the the prep instructions asked um, asked you to to run this command git clone for uh, these three different repositories here. So you should check um, first of all that you did run that git clone command, um, and second you should check that um, even just in your normal terminal, um, you know not inside Docker but just in your normal terminal that you can see these three directories sitting in a single directory. So on, on my slide here in the right hand side, which is just a normal terminal, not in Docker at all, I still, I, so I put things in this folder called jetscape-docker. Um, and then if I just ls in that directory, I see these three things. And so whatever I see here will show up exactly in my Docker container. So, so to fix that, one can, one can really just look on your um, 
your normal terminal. Okay. Um, so I, I would propose now, unless uh, the chairs think otherwise, to, to start moving ahead. Um, and again, for those having some technical issues, please, um, we reply on the Slack as time goes on. Um, and we'll try to also build in some breaks and you know keep things at relatively slow pace so that people can catch up if you run into a glitch or two along the way. Okay. So um, to get started, let's let's really try to get a feel for this XML configuration in Jetscape. Um, so I told you that there's two different Jetscape XML files: this master XML file and the user XML file. Um, so to start, let's um, let's just open up. So you can do this in your normal terminal, in your normal laptop, and whatever your favorite text editor is. Just just open up and take a look at this this file. So it's it's located in the Jetscape directory under config, and then Jetscape underscore master. And so just just um, you know take a quick browse through this. You will see. Um, something like what I show on the bottom left here. This is just a snapshot of the top of that file. Um, you'll see many, many different settings. And you'll see also uh, many, many different modules. It's, it's a bit of a busy uh, file. Um, and and uh, I remind you that this, this is kind of your database. This is um, what you look at when you want to think, what are all the possible parameters and what are all the possible modules that I could implement if I want to. Um, but I want to emphasize also that as a user, you should never actually modify this. So unless, for example, you're adding a completely new module to the Jetscape code, but you, you would add a section here. But if you are just running Jetscape code, don't ever modify this. Leave these default settings exactly as they are. Um, and you only will modify things when we come to this, this user file. OK, so that then brings us to the user file, which really is, is um, one of the most important things uh, to, to know uh, and get familiar with for running Jetscape. Um, so to start with, in, in the examples that we're going to use today, we're going to um, mostly use this particular user file, which generates proton-proton events. So keeping things uh, as simple as possible um, from the physics side for today. Um, and so this file, uh, you can also go ahead and open in your text editor. Um, this jetscape slash config slash jetscape user pp19. So this PP19 stands for um, particular uh, tune we call of Jetscape for a proton-proton base baseline. Um, and the file looks like the following on the right. So it's, it's quite simple um, in the sense that it's, it's short. It's 30-some you know, lines of code. And so um, what you notice here is it specifies in these shown by these arrows, what are the physics modules that we'll run? So there is some initialization information at the top. And then there you see this block called hard process. Um, or the, the comment here says hard process. And then the, the actual XML tag itself says hard. So that specifies for the hard scattering, we're going to use a Pythia gun. So we use Pythia to generate the hard scattering. Uh, and then there's a second module, which is the energy loss modules or, or parton showers. Um, and then finally, there's a hydrogenization module. Um, so I, I see uh, actually a, a question asking, why, why should we not modify the master XML file? It's a very good question. Um, the, the reason is that um, we want to have a way to specify default parameters. Um, now, this doesn't, it certainly doesn't guarantee that the physics you're going to get out is correct, but we want to have some, you know, roughly reasonable default values of parameters. Um, and if you start changing that master XML file, that can, that would be kind of a bad design or, or mistake, uh, prone to making mistakes. Um, because if you change a parameter from the default, 
and you don't remember to change it back in that master file, then anything else you run from that point on will use kind of this, not, not the actual default values, but some other things. And so really the, the, the I mean, it, it will, technically it will work. I mean, you can make it work, but you shouldn't do that. You should instead, if you want to change some parameter, you just put that parameter in your user file. Um, exact same parameter name, everything is just any parameter that you specify in this user file, um, that value will be used instead of the default one that goes into the, um, into the master file. So um, there's, there's a, you know, any, any information that you want to override, any parameters that you want to set, you can set in this user file. So you can set the number of events here that you want to generate. You can set the output format. So whether you want this ASCII format or HEPMC output format, um, you can set, for example, uh, um, when you generate the hard scattering, what um, uh, you can set uh, PT hat bin edges to generate a hard process in Pythia. You can set the square root S that you want to generate the events at. Um, and then you can set, as mentioned, any um, default parameter that you want to override, you can, you can change to your liking. So what I would like to ask you to do to get started here is let's make a couple of modifications to this, this user file. Um, so this Jetscape user PP19 file. So to start, let's, let's set the number of events. Let's just generate a small number of events. So I set that to 200. And let's make a change also to the output format that is there. So let's change from HEPMC format to ASCII format. So you should just edit these this XML tags to say Jetscape writer ASCII. And this uh, on should tell you it's on. If it says off there, then it won't uh, write anything in that output format. Um, and then let's, let's just leave everything else the same as it is. Um, so once you do that, let's now try running some events to make sure that you know these changes that we made to the configuration actually register when we generate some things. So now let's let's uh, enter your terminal inside the Docker container, and then uh, you should have already built Jetscape um, from the the preparation instructions. So let's let's just change directory into a Jetscape slash build. And then execute this command. So run Jetscape, and then just give as a command line argument um, this this configuration file. So to to modify this configuration file, you can do. I recommend to do this text editing outside of your Docker container. You also can do it in the Docker container, although there is only some limited. Um, uh, uh, software, I mean, limited text editors, uh, and it's it's not you know, there's not really graphical user interface inside the Docker container. Um, so I, I recommend to edit that that XML file just in outside of the Docker container on your own uh, in your favorite text editor. So I'll give you a moment to do that. Um, I would ask again if if this works. So if you execute this command and you start seeing some output uh, from Jetscape to the, sc to the screen. Um, if you can add also a yes to the, um, to the zoom, at, click the yes zoom button. Um, and if, you're, if it's not working for you to, to click a no. Um, so meanwhile, I see a couple questions. Um, one question is how do we comment a line in the XML? Okay, I think maybe somebody's answering that, but there are some examples, um, for example, this line that is written, if I can't highlight things very well, uh, hard process here on line 10 on this slide, that's actually a comment. So it, okay, it's a little bit annoying syntax to be honest, but um, this like less than exclamation mark dash dash and then uh, dash dash greater than sign, anything you put in there is, is registered as a comment. Um, okay, there is a question also, how uh, can we set a different Pythia tune? Um, so you, you, um, 
so in principle, um, you can you can set uh, really anything. Um, you, you can basically give Pythia any um, command that you want. Um, although there is kind of a limited set of these XML tags to um, uh, to specify this. So I, I think um, I don't believe there is a specific one. Um, and somebody else can jump in if, if I'm wrong about that. I don't believe there's a specific tag here to change the tune, um, although you, you can still in Jetscape have that capability. You just need to do it a little more directly. James, um, can I comment on this? Um, yeah, yes, please go ahead. So we don't have a separate uh, tune kind of hard coded in the same. We have the PT hat min, uh, but we have a generic comment which basically. Uh, allows you to set any string uh, in the Pythia setup. So you can clearly modify everything you can modify in Pythia. So yes, you can change any tune. OK, great. Yeah, I, I forgot at least what is the name of this or, or whether one can directly do it. But that's that's great. And so I see also some, some questions about how do we know what these parameters are. Um, so for, for this detail, um, there is in this uh, Jetscape manual that I linked um, earlier, this archive number. Um, in the appendix there, there is actually a list of kind of a full set of parameters that you can browse, um, as well as, um, OK, it, it, sometimes you can also look in this Jetscape master file. There, there are sometimes some comments or um, some explanations of what those parameters are. Um, this is, you know, sometimes a, a work in progress also, of course, to document everything perfectly. Um, so please also ask if there's a particular parameter um, as you're you know, developing some, some code or running things that you don't know what it is. Um, uh, we can try to better clarify that in the documentation. Um, okay, so uh, let me ask the chairs actually how um, how are things looking in terms of people clicking yes that they can successfully run this command and people who it's 50, cannot? 4, 50 7, 8, whatever uh, yeses and one no okay okay so let, let me give just another minute so again please try to um, to click at least one of those buttons um, or else we we, we want to make sure that people aren't kind of getting lost or confused how to enter that input. Um, if you're confused about that, also please write in the Slack so that, that we know there's a problem. Um, so let me, um, let me for the moment um, go ahead a little bit since most people are ready. So once you run that command, um, it, it will generate a bunch of out, standard output to your terminal saying you know, a bunch of Jetscape settings and Pythia settings. And, at the end, it will tell you it, it uh, was generating some events. And then what you should find, if you look in the same current directory that you're in, you should now find a file that says test underscore out dot uh, dat. And this is your output file that it was generated. So you can actually see this by, um, if we look back at this, uh, this user XML file, um, there is something called output file name. So that tells you what is this test dot test underscore out. And then the, the um, file extension is just determined based on what type of format that you set. So for the ASCII, it is dot DAT. And for HEPMC, it will be dot HEPMC. So you, you can now, so take a look at this, this output file, this test out dot dot here. Uh, you'll see a whole bunch of lines with a whole bunch of numbers and various information. Um, so this this contains everything uh, that we've run from the the Jetscape event. Um, so there's uh, um, you see some event info at the top. Um, you see a list of initial partons that are then shown, and so you see also this output has kind of some you know, commented lines, so to speak. I mean, this is really just a text file as opposed to code, but there are some some comments telling you a bit what the different uh, pieces are. So there's some shower initiating partons. And then there's, um, there's the parton shower history as well, if you scroll down a bit more. So there'll be a bunch of numbers of what are those, um, 
what are um, the the nodes of the the parton shower? So the nodes are this graph structure which encodes the um, parton shower, and then you see this this syntax. For example, like there's this zero in brackets and then an arrow to one, which is telling you uh, the splitting process or the showering process of part on zero uh, went to part on one. And you see part on one went to part on two and also part on one went to part on three. So it's split into two different partons. And then all these numbers here, um, you'll see are various informations, um, you know, the particle ID, energies, momenta, eta, phi, different, uh, different things like this. Um, which we'll see also uh, how to extract this information in a bit more usable or user-friendly way um, soon. And you see finally then there's also hadronization information. So you see a list of final state hadrons. Um, and so this, this uh, kind of summarizes the information that is in each event. And then we generated 200 events and so there will be um, a bunch of different blocks, one after the other, um, of this. So again, this this is um, in the file, this testout.dat that should be produced in the same directory that you ran the run Jetscape executable. Okay. So. Um, uh, let's see, I, I see there is actually a question. So before I move on, um, there is some question about uh, what some of the values are in this, um, in this output format. Um, so the, the part on shower, so I didn't actually show this in this snippet here, but basically in the, the third block of text, which I show here, which shows this zero arrow to one and so on. Um, right above this, there's kind of a list of just, you know, part on zero, part on one, part on two. Um, this is just the, the list of partons that, the total list of partons that appear in the shower. And then these arrows, what they do is they connect, uh, they show how those different partons are connected together in the shower. Um, so, okay, so also chairs, please interrupt me if there are some other questions that I um, there's a number that I see coming in that also I think the TAs are um, replying to some of these simpler ones or more technical ones. Um, but uh, yeah, please also highlight if I miss um, if I miss James, any questions. Yes, James, are you are you polling people right now for, for something? Um, not not currently. We can we can reset actually. So you want me to reset it? Okay. Oh uh, yeah, that that'd be great. So yeah, sorry, I kind of forgot to to mention this. Okay. So I did notice that the second poll, we didn't have as many yeses um, as before. So I think that a couple people have probably fallen behind a little bit. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, so let, let me just, once again, encourage people, if you're, if you're confused or lost, please, um, let us know. You can also enter the, the slow down. I believe there's a slow down button in Zoom. If in general, just the pace is going too quick for you. Um, so let, let's give let's give maybe just a moment for people to to catch up. Um, in the meantime, you can kind of browse and and get a little bit familiar with this this output uh, file. Um, you're free as well. You know, if, if things are going at too slow a pace for you, um, you can play around a bit more with uh, generating other events or um, looking into also the, the documentation or um, this, this Jetscape manual to just read and get some kind of understand further details uh, while we wait for other people to catch up. So there's a few questions in the chat um, in Zoom and we're trying to watch both, but it's a little tricky. So if you have an outstanding question that has not been answered, please type, retype it into the Slack channel. What you see in the Slack channel is that most people's questions um, 
have been answered one-on-one -on -one by a TA, but because there's no threads in the Zoom channel, Zoom really is not the right forum for some of these individual threads. Right, so, okay, so I, I think um, I'd like to move ahead a little and then we'll try to take a, a small break also once we get to the end of this first part so that people can, um, any stragglers can also catch up. Um, so, okay, we, we've generated now this, this output file, test out .dat. And this is this kind of custom Jetscape ASCII format encoding all the possible information from the, the event. Um, what we can do also now to make our lives simpler, um, we might only be interested in getting out the final state hadrons. We might not care, for example, about saving the parton shower history um, or even the partons at all. And so we have created also um, a couple of additional executables to allow you to kind of slim down this output file um, and make it much easier for you to um, plot some observable that you want from this. So to do this, there is an executable called final state hadrons is located also in the same directory. So you should still be inside the build directory of this uh, inside your Docker container. And so go ahead and try to execute this command here. Um, so final state hadrons, and then as a first uh, command line argument, um, you give the, the file name of your output file from Jetscape, so test out.dat. And then as a second argument in the command line, you just give a name to an output file that you will generate. So you can name this anything you want. I called it my final state hadrons.txt. So go ahead and give this a try. Um, and what you should see if that works, so it should take a moment to execute and it will print out some information to you while it's executing. Um, you can then open up this file this uh, output file, so what I called my final state hadrons. And inside here, you see something a bit simpler than what was in, um, in the full output dot that file. And so I, I show you here roughly what you should be seeing if you open up this, this final state hadron output file. You just see a list, uh, you know, an index list of hadron one, zero, hadron one, hadron two, and so on. And then each column, uh, in this text file is just telling you some simple information about the particles. So the PDG value to tell you what particle it is. Um, and then some other things which I label, you know, the, the kinematics, the energy, momenta, uh, eta phi of these particles. Um, there's also some status um, field which one can in principle use. Um, so Okay, now uh, I think it would be good. Let's try one more poll here um, to just click yes in Zoom, the Zoom button, if you have gotten to this point, if you can see this file, if it makes some rough sense to you. Um, and if it's not working, if you need more time, uh, click the no button. Let's give a moment for people's responses to come in. <clears throat> Um, so P PD is asked, what is PDG value? PDG value is a um, uh, particular convention called particle data group, uh, an I ID number, which tells you um, what type of particle it is. So if it's a charged pion or a proton or whatever species of hadron there is, you can kind of Google and you'll find some a uh, map of you know, what does value 211 mean or minus 211. Um, so the, it's asked also, we have a question, what does the first zero stand for in this file? Um, I believe, okay, uh, uh, off the top of my head, I see I forgot actually to label what that one is. I believe that's a status, um, uh, status, uh, basically a, a free field that one can assign to, um, in Jetscape uh, a number if you want to keep track of any further information. Um, but here, you, I think you don't. Um, so one could, in, in principle, assign this differently for, say, jet hadrons or medium hadrons. Um, here, we really only have a jet, and so it's not really uh, needed for what we do here. 
and others others also please jump in if, if you have a better answer than what I give. Okay, and can I can I ask then uh, from the chairs how, how are we looking? We have 69 yeses and five noes, and we've seen a flurry of new questions on the Slack. In addition to some, um, uh, they're getting answered, but I think that it may just be taking people a little bit to get their technical issues fixed and to move on. Mm -hmm. So um, good. So so let's let's take a few minutes um, to kind of pause here. Um, so th this is actually the end of the first part of these three exercises. Um, so you know if if it works for you, I mean, feel free to take a take maybe a five minutes breather um, and take a break or continue to play around with things. I would also encourage you. Um, and let's let's just give a few minutes for for those that have some problem to, to get the troubleshooting in place. I would say if you get your problem solved, you can go in and change the um, change your no to a yes. And then um, James, did you want to make it officially a five or 10 minute break so that we, maybe we give people a, a Maybe we should give people a 10 minute breather. Yeah, so why, why don't, um, that, that sounds good to me, yes. So we will come back to keep it, we'll, we'll make it nine minutes to keep it on the button. We'll come back at 1040 Eastern. But you are encouraged to continue asking questions and try to catch up. And I'm gonna leave the poll open so you can flip your no to a yes if you get your problem solved.